the California woman who set a record for fastest climb up Mount Everest last week recalled seeing four dead bodies during her ascent and called on regulators in Nepal to make protocol changes to prevent more deaths. Roxanne Vogel, 33, of Berkeley, California, took just two weeks to scale Everest, the world's tallest mountain, a trip that normally takes about two months. Vogel works as a nutrition and performance research manager at Blue Energy Labs, a sports nutrition products company based in Berkeley, according to The Washington Post. She is also an experienced climber who had scaled the tallest peaks on five continents prior to topping Everest. In preparation for climbing the world's tallest mountain, the 33-year-old spent three years climbing other peaks and training her body, enduring a rigorous exercise and acclimatization regimen known as Lightning Ascent Protocol that helped her cut the time needed to climb Everest in half. Scroll down for video, after going through so much prep work, Vogel was as shocked as the rest of the world last week when a photo of dozens of Everest climbers standing in line near the peak of the mountain went viral. While most tourists climbing Everest do so from the mountain's southern Nepalese side, where permits currently have no experience requirements, Vogel's team made the climb on the mountain's northern Tibetan side where there are no lines and permits are limited. You can absolutely look at the north as the way things ought to be, just that freedom of being in the mountains alone is a feeling unlike anything else," Vogel told ABC7 in an interview that aired Thursday night. I can't imagine waiting in a line to get to the top to take a picture, she said. This year, the Nepalese government issued a record 381 permits to scale Everest, costing $11,000 each, according to Reuters. Climbers spoke of traffic jams below the summit, in the death zone above 8,000 meters, where many deaths occur due to the lack of oxygen. Share this article Share confident climbers with experienced guides and Sherpas would have known about the jam and waited for their chance to go up safely, Adrian Ballinger of the US-based company Alpanglo Expeditions said in a Reuters interview. A record setting 11 people died climbing Mount Everest in May. A total of nine climbers have died on the mountain's Nepalese side, the most during a climbing season on the peak since a deadly earthquake in 2015, according to Reuters. They include Utah climber Don Cash, 55, who collapsed and died during his descent after climbing Everest on May 22. Cash's family told the Salt Lake Tribune they believe he died from cardiac arrest. His body could not be recovered. Colorado climber Christopher Coolish, 62, died shortly after getting to the top of Everest on Monday, attaining his goal of scaling the highest peaks on each of the seven continents, according to his brother, Mark Coolish. Cash and Coolish were experienced mountaineers, but many attempting to climb Everest are not. Vogel recalled seeing corpses during her own expedition. On my summit day, I saw four bodies. They would be within a few feet of me. So you have to stop and stand there and be next to the body, doing what you're doing, and it's really eye opening, she said. Since flying back to California, she's begun the process of making plans to travel to Antarctica so she can climb the frozen continent's tallest mountain, the Vincent Massive, and joining the late Coalition the Elite Seven Summit Club of climbers who have scaled the tallest peaks on all seven continents. 
some Everest trekking companies perform health checks on prospective clients before beginning expeditions, but there is no mandatory requirement to do so, Reuters reported. Operators have urged Nepal's government to cut the number of permits and raise the price to around $20,000 to combat increased crowds. Vogel suggested Nepalese regulators issue mandates requiring climbers to have health checks and a minimum amount of climbing experience before attempting to scale the world's tallest mountain. But she emphasized climbers who want to should be permitted to take the risk. There are other ways to climb the mountain or doing an accelerated itinerary, it doesn't have to be what you saw on the Nepalese side of Everest this year, she said. I think people who are serious about climbing or really want to climb Everest for the right reasons, I don't think they should be deterred from doing that because of what happened.